a reading from the first book of Maccabees. The officers of the king in charge of enforcing the apostasy came to the city of Modain to organize the sacrifices. Many of Israel joined them, but Mattathias and his son gathered in a group apart. Then the officers of the king addressed Mattathias, you are a leader, an honorable and great man in this city, supported by sons and king. Come now, be the first to obey the king's command, as all the Gentiles and the men of Judah. Then you and your sons shall be numbered among the king's friends. And those who are left in Jerusalem have done. Then you, but Mattathias answered in a loud voice, Although all the Gentiles in the king's realm obey him and consent to the king's orders, yet I and my sons and my king will keep to the covenant of our fathers. God forbid that we should forsake the law and the commandments, nor depart from our religion in the slightest degree. As he finished saying these words, a certain Jew came forward in the sight of all to offer sacrifice on the altar in Modern, according to the king's order. When Mattathias saw him, he was full with zeal. His heart moved in his, his heart, his heart was moved, and his just fury was aroused. At the same time, he also killed. He also killed the messenger of the king who was, enforcing, who was forcing them to sacrifice, and he tore down the altar. Thus, he showed his zeal for the law, just as Phinehas did with Zimri, son of Sali. Then Mattathias went through the city shouting, Let everyone who is zealous for the law and who stands by the covenant follow after me. Thereupon, he fled to the mountains with his sons, leaving behind in the city all their possessions. Many who sought to live according to righteousness and religious custom went out into the desert to settle there. The word of the Lord. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. God the Lord has spoken and summoned the earth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, from Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Gather my faithful ones before me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, and the heavens proclaim his just. For God himself is the judge. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Offer to God praise as your sacrifice and fulfill your vows to the Most High. Then call upon me in time of distress. I will rescue you, and you shall, be, and you shall glorify me. To the upright power of God. Hallelujah. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory be to you, o Lord. As Jesus drew near to Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If this day you only knew what makes for peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes, for the days are coming upon you when your enemies will raise a palisade against you, and they will encircle you and hem you in on all sides. They will smash you to the ground and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another within you, because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So my dear brothers and sisters, we still continue to reflect on the readings about the end time, the church drawing our attention to the fact that the end is near and we need to prepare ourselves in order to give a good account when we stand before the Lord. Today's gospel concerns Jesus weeping over Jerusalem. If you go through the Gospels, we don't have too many occasions when Jesus Christ wept. I think the other one that I remember is when Lazarus died. So when Jesus weeps, it is serious. It is God weeping. And it is something that we need to consider, something that we need to reflect on. Jesus saw what was going to happen to Jerusalem, and indeed, it happened. Jerusalem was destroyed. As we continue to reflect on the end times and the fact that all of us, irrespective of our standing in the church, irrespective of our standing in society, will give an account before God, let us imagine for a moment we encountering Jesus Christ physically, what will be the emotion that Jesus Christ will express when he looks at us? Because Jesus sees the depth of each and every one of us. If Jesus should look at me, will he weep or he will smile? And if he should look at you also, will he weep or he will smile? I think the reflection that we do on this will be very important and it will help us as we navigate the rest, not just of the liturgical year, but the civil year to prepare for the new year. The kind of relationship that we have with Jesus will determine what his countenance will be towards us as to whether he is weeping or he is smiling. And if it happens that when you reflect on this and Jesus is weeping at you or is weeping at me, then there's something we may have to do. Jerusalem did not take advantage of the presence of Jesus. They failed to see that Jesus among them was God in their midst. We cannot make the same mistake. We cannot fail to see the opportunity that we live in now, the opportunity we have to encounter Jesus every single day in the Eucharist, the blessings that are available to us, the graces that are available to us. It is when we take hold of these opportunities that the joy of Jesus comes to us, that Jesus is pleased with us and is happy with us. So let us spend some time today 
to think about it. When Jesus is looking at you, will he weep or will he smile? So after the intercessions, uh, Professor Nike, you come forward, supported by the members of the Pauline Society. Shall we rise for the intercessions? Our response will be, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church, that zeal for God's commandments and his holy covenant may be the driving force behind the actions in every situation of apostasy and moral decadence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may not miss the time of our visitation or ignore what makes for our peace, but accept the salvation of Jesus as loyal and zealous followers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in whose lives not one stone is left upon another because of the ravages of oppression, natural disaster, violence, illness, or grief, that our loving prayer may help them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have died, most especially Prof. Rodriguez, and for all forgotten souls who are still undergoing purification, that through the power of this Holy Mass, they may be released into heavenly joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, let us pray for our personal intentions. <laughs> 